So I've been asked a lot frequently. In fact, even one of the questions in a recent Q&A I did was on this subject is, what cut of meat would you use if you were trying to feed a lot of people for the least amount of money possible? And time and time again, I always come back to this, a pork loin. This is an over eight pound pork loin and I paid, I think around 239, 249 a pound for it. So this right here was under $20 and this will easily feed 10 people. And it's one of my favorite cuts to cook out on the grill because it doesn't take a long time. It accepts seasoning really well and you can get great glazes on it. And we're gonna be doing a glaze here in a little while to get ready for later when it's out on the grill. But first I wanna break this down into two pieces. Now sometimes the ends of these will be more pointed and this one has a little bit of a flappy section, but I'm gonna leave that. We're just gonna cut this in half and get it seasoned up. There's really no trimming to do. You can see the other side has a nice fat layer on it. We wanna leave that, at least I do. If you wanna take this off and just have meat with no fat on the outside, go ahead, but I like this fat layer. So we're just gonna go right down the middle here, cut it into two sections. Just like that, now I'm gonna transfer it to a tray and we're gonna season it on the tray because it's gonna go in the refrigerator for a couple hours just to let some of that seasoning soak in. Now at this point, you could season this up with salt, pepper, garlic powder, paprika, anything you want or your favorite rub. And what I'm gonna be using today is the all-purpose rub from Guga Foods. Guga sent this to me a little while back and I've used it on several things to try it out. It is fantastic. A lot of moisture on the surface here. We don't need a binder here. If you want to use a binder, go ahead. I rarely use a binder because I find there's enough moisture, but if you like to, no problem with that. Let's get a good coating on here. Get all the sides, even that fat side. Get our ends. All right, I'm happy with that. This is gonna go in the refrigerator now, like I said, for a couple, three hours. I want that seasoning to really sort of set there and absorb a little bit. Right after it goes in the refrigerator, we're gonna make our glaze, and then in a while, we'll head out to the grill. So for the glaze here, it's another one of those option things. Just like the seasoning of the pork loin is, this is something you can customize to your own taste. We're gonna be making sort of a pepper jelly glaze. Now, if you don't have pepper jelly or you can't get it, you could actually use something like, you know, strawberry preserves, raspberry preserves. I like raspberry for pork, it works really well. And all we're gonna do is thin that out with some water. But I am using a pepper jelly today. It's this passion fire fresh fruit pepper jelly. It has a little bit of heat to it. I'm just gonna go ahead and get this into my dish here, into my bowl. And you can see it's fairly thick and that's why we're gonna thin it out. See some of those pepper flakes in there. Let's get a little taste without anything. Ooh. Oh, that's nice. Just a slight little kick there. This is not super hot, but just enough mixed with that sweetness. Really like it. First thing I wanna do is just take a fork and sort of break this up a little bit. If there are a lot of big chunks of fruit in what you're using, you might wanna throw it in the blender really quickly. But this is not big chunks of fruit. It's just sort of thick. So I'm gonna add maybe, I don't know, a tablespoon of water here. If you wanna get really crazy, you could add something like whiskey. It's not a bad idea. I don't have any whiskey right now though. I'm gonna add maybe another tablespoon here. Get my little mini whisk here and just work it a little more. Okay, that's good. It's gonna get covered. It's gonna go in the refrigerator and just hang out there until we need it out at the grill. All right, the Weber kettle is up to temp. My target temp today is 250 degrees. And after we get the sectioned pork loin on, I'll be adding some peach wood for smoke. So let's go ahead and get this pork loin on. Get our piece of peach on. Let's get a temp probe in here. All right, let's get our lid on and get smoking on this chilly day. 
Now the ultimate internal temperature I want on this pork loin is 145 degrees. I'm gonna pull it at 143. I've found that that's really good. It just doesn't carry over a whole lot, maybe three to five degrees. That's my experience. So 143, I feel comfortable with, but at about 100 degrees, that's when we're gonna glaze this. So I'll see you back here when we hit 100 degrees. All right, we just hit 100 internal. The temperature on the kettle's holding really steady, right in that 250 range. Let's go ahead and get the lid off and glaze these pork loins. I'm also gonna adjust their placement on here. I'm gonna swap them. Looking good. Now I'm going to move these around here. I'm also gonna turn them around. I don't think I mentioned I'm using the Mallory Firewall today and the Mallory Cast Iron Grate. Gives me a good two zone setup. All right, let's get our lid on, keep smoking, and I will pull this at 143 degrees. I'll see you back here then. All right, we are just about to hit 143 degrees. Tam's been holding great this whole time. Let's go ahead and get these pork loins off, get them inside. I'm gonna let them rest, kind of covered in foil for about 15 minutes, and we'll cut in, have a taste. That is what I'm talking about. That looks gorgeous. Let's get our probe out of here. I think pork loin with a good rub and a nice glaze just takes on such a nice color, even with these little craggly open bits, which is normal. And I am hungry, so I wanna get these inside now so they can get through that short rest so I can have a taste. So here is one of our pork loins. It's been resting, like I said, for 15, actually it's probably closer to 20 minutes. Total cook time on this was about two hours and 20 minutes, which is pretty normal for pork loin that I find. I mean, that was a really long one, but that's not really what determines the length of the cook, it's the thickness of the pork loin. And I'm loving the color of this, it just turned out perfect. So. Let's cut right down the middle here, get a little slice, and have a taste. Let's see. Oh yeah, that is nice and juicy. That's one of the things I love about pork loin is if you just really go for that 145, which is the recommended safe temperature for whole pork cuts. I know a long time ago it used to be a lot higher, like 165 or so, but when you can hit that 145 here, you get just super juicy pork. Now let's cut a slice. Oh yeah. And when I say this could feed 10 people or eight people if they're super hungry, I mean for 20 bucks for a full pork loin like that, that is not bad at all. Cut some pieces here so we can have a nice little taste. So here we go. Mmm. I really, really do like that all-purpose rub from Guga. You can tell he put a lot of thought into that and testing it for a long time because it goes good on chicken, it goes good on beef, it goes good on pork, and for pork, this is the proof. Mmm, little bit of sweetness from that glaze at the end, and for me, that pairs perfectly with pork. It's not a ton of glaze, it's not dripping off there. It was just set there at the end, and man, great way to finish this off.